What's up everybody, this is Sugi Strategy and doing one of my throwback reviews. Well, it's not really a throwback. This game came out last year after all. And obviously I'm talking about Total War Attila, or should I say Total War Rome 3. Well, meme side, well the meme is actually pretty good because I think there are a lot of similarities between Rome 3 and Attila. I believe they both use the same game engine, they almost have identical... Um, you know, grand campaign maps, they use a lot of uh, similar assets such as sounds and certain models and the interfaces are for the most part almost kind of similar as well. So there are a lot of similarities between the two, not only just the timelines are kind of, you know, close to each other and everything. But Attila does play out a bit differently. One of the new features that they added in this game were actually two things. And one is the horde system. So essentially, instead of playing a faction that has a lot of bases and cities, you're able to play as horde, something that, you know, moves around the map and is able to set up camp and build things there and build up armies and then, you know, you know set out from the camp and move somewhere else. This type of system, you know, uh, makes the game a bit different and especially like you're able to play as the Huns, the Attila's faction and White Huns for one. And both of them are hordes which are able to also destroy cities like burn them. It is called Scorched Earth Policy where they actually burn the whole city down and people are not able to capture it without like paying like handsome sum of money and rebuilding everything from the startup. And it is... Um, in some ways, the Scorched Earth policy is kind of like a um, bit back and forth type of a system. And I'm going to explain you why. It is because essentially when you're playing a non-Horde faction, so bear in mind some factions as like Scalavians and some of the Scythians, they are able to transition out from the Horde into the city model. But not everybody is able to do that. Otherwise, I would have played the campaign with the Huns. I did try the Huns, but I didn't like playing that Horde type of model. I kind of like the city building uh, system more. And sadly, the Huns are not able to convert into the city model. They are able to just be Hordes. And don't get me wrong, it's the Horde system is probably very nice for a lot of people. But if you play on the normal side, it's like the hordes will come attack, scourge down your cities, and then you have to go back there and rebuild them. And it's kind of going back and forth type of a process for the most part. And it kind of can get a bit tired. And then you have this other element in the game because it takes a place in the Dark Ages. Everything is kind of like fucked up. You have this separatist system. So if your faction's public order falls too low, there will be a raising faction. So let's say you play Eastern Roman Empire, there will be Eastern Roman uh, separatists, not just Eastern Roman rebels. There will be both different factions, and they essentially, you know, become a rivaling faction. They're kind of like rebels with a lot of bases, and obviously they can create their own satrapies and alliances and everything like that. And it's kind of annoying because they can always arise again and again. And then you have to like deal with multiple enemies. And then there's some stupid stuff in the game because um, you're able to make certain like states satrapies. Like um, the Western Roman separatists in my current game made um, Western Roman Empire their vessels or satrapies as they're called in this game. And that shouldn't be like possible from the like... Uh, from certain points of the view that I like the diplomatic points. So they're really like kind of weird diplomatic systems inside the game and always been since like dawn of time. And although like um, it is kind of refreshing type of element, I can't say I really love it. I don't really think the Scorched Earth system is that like um, great. And the game, you have to do like really, really good diplomacy in the very beginning of the game because you can really get fucked really early on. If the public order falls too low, you get a separatist and they will crush you in the very beginning of the game. And that's really, really bad. And that has happened like I did probably you know, start the grand campaign like six times over. And I got really fucked in the very beginning because I didn't... I maybe played too aggressive and I didn't do really good defensive alliances and such like that. So, in terms of the play style, Attila is very, very fragile in the beginning of the Grand campaign because you got, like, the 
hordes and then you have allies and separatists that can really really fuck you over and obviously a lot of people probably who are looking up reviews have or people have made reviews about this game have probably complained about the whole DLC policy with Sega it is a sad thing it is a sad aspect of this game industry really to be honest but um you know it's it's kind of sucky because some of the factions that are great are behind DLC although I didn't really like majority of the factions in this game um, there's always been something that never been added like in the medieval um, Total War uh, Medieval 2 I wanted to play as the Mongols but that was not an option not even in the DLC so there are always these things that you kinda want to try but you're not really able to do that and maybe some of the factions that I would have wanted to play were not available and even the DLC ones were not that good but they do have different like you know armies and units in Rome 2 I thought that there wasn't as much variety between the units and the faction buildings as in Attila so they have done better job with that in Attila versus Rome 2 um, obviously the AI is still kind of garbage on some of the fights they don't do as they're supposed to you have to like smash your know, right click oh go here go here and it's kind of like if you don't flank properly your units always get caught up in fighting an army that is kind of like right ahead on the direction and you're not able to really disengage in this game properly from combat which is something that they really have to improve on their future games I haven't played Warhammer, Total War Warhammer enough to really tell has that been you know remedied enough obviously the animations are really fun you also have um, this is really fun to actually defend on this game Although the parigade system that they have on this game, because you're limited to have only one or two parigades based on like how further you have your city, but um, uh, parigade system is kind of garbage. But because you're not able to choose where you're gonna put them, but if you're gonna put them on a certain spot and put your armies on a certain spot, especially with the Roman forces, you're able to with the Tetsudo format, uh, you are able to pretty well like turtle out in certain bases and kind of make the enemies glitch out and stay on certain positions and wait till the time runs out and you will end up in a draw or winning the battle and there are certain these type of exploration expect um exploits in the ai in this way and it is um something that's kind of obviously kind of hard to script but um sometimes it's just very fucking ridiculous how it works out and um, it is still like a good game, but obviously I didn't buy it on release, a lot of people did, and they said that it wasn't that good on release, to be honest, because it, they give you 75% of the game and essentially put everything else behind DLC, which is kind of bad. And I will be doing a review, obviously, on the expansion campaign Age of Charlemagne, that will be more interesting, probably, and, you know... Um, Attila, you know, kind of saying that buy the game on, you know, sale, try to get uh, some of the, um, I don't know what it's called, the actual, um, the legacy or the collector's edition, which bundles with some of the DLC, such as the thing like, having like, blood effects on the game is behind the DLC is fucking ridiculous, like, that's just so fucking dumb, that should be inside the main game. And obviously, I do think that um, you should definitely try to find a good deal, maybe from G2A or Bundle Stars or any elsewhere, just to get the DLCs in a low price. Don't pay the full price of the game. You know, it's not really a worth of sixty dollars. Well, right now it's uh, priced at Steam at forty, but um, try to get like a really, really low price on the game and the DLCs you want to buy because there might be some factions that you want to play inside the game that you, you know, may, might want to buy on a low price. But then to really, like, summarize the thing, you know, the graphics are pretty good. It does crash sometimes, and there's just the always been with the Total War games. The music, it's decent. It's not a masterpiece. Um, there are... What I kind of liked about medieval games, you had more, like, interesting time periods. And in this one, you don't have any special events. And except the fact when Attila is born in the game and when he comes into power and he becomes the king instead of a prince. And um, there will be time periods where you will be rewarded some gold if you survive long enough in the game. And obviously you will get a huge boost when Attila dies if you're not playing the Huns. 
and Horde states. Um, but essentially, you know, um, I don't want to like derail this review any longer. It is an okay, it's an okay game. I think it's better than Rome 2, but it still has its flaws. And maybe if you can get a better price for the Warhammer, maybe pick that instead. But definitely, um, the DLC is a bit of a scam, and hopefully Sega will kind of revert their policies a bit, but maybe not, who knows. Um, thanks for watching, it would be cool if you would subscribe and maybe check out my other reviews that I've done for other strategy games, ROM 2 for instance, and also gonna play um, Age of Empires new expansion that is coming out, I think, day after tomorrow. Um, and um, that's it, and I will see you guys soon. Cheers.